recording. Okay, so it's recording. Excellent. All right. So quite a quite a busy day yesterday. We're moving along. We're pretty much on schedule. It's actually quite okay. We're we've got a number of people. Uh, definitely, if you look at the video tape, it's quite busy in the workshop. So it's pretty good. Uh, can you switch to? I got a. I see. Can you switch to my screen? My sc uh, Pin it. Uh, let's see. I think that what I got to do is I got to share my screen. Which share? Bonus bacon. Along with your webcam? Yeah. Let's see. I think you, you do it close to you. Yeah. Oh, just a sec. And the, the Poke Yoki, it's, it's on the wiki. Yeah. I just need a line in between the words. Okay. Uh, so yeah, take a look at the screen. Let's see, where are we here? Yeah, I was trying to show this. Right, so yeah. And this this time around, everyone just moved a lot of a lot of activity. Here. We did quite a bit. So wall modules. Different corner modules, door aperture modules. Basically, we um, came in there. I think the session, I think it worked relatively well where we went through, okay, here's how you design this. And we simplified the design. So it's not like last time with the apprenticeship. It was much harder in the apprenticeship. But we're simplifying some things to make it understandable to the point that people could actually go out there and understanding the basic concept uh, pretty much went forward. And um, how did people? feel about that because uh, I felt that pretty much with the understanding of the concept we were able to knock out I mean we didn't really have instruct like detailed instructions mm. but we were still able to knock out all the modules in the in the correct way because there were only so many things we need to, needed to pay attention uh, by by going up to uh, the same point in modules uh, keeping a lot of the things the same and where we had to do corners or windows slight differences that we had I think the time we spent in the morning, uh, I think that that kind of worked. That people were able to orient themselves and actually uh, and know what to build. Any comments on that? That part? Well, it seems like everybody um, got in here in their own thing. Right? Like we didn't need to uh, go and help anybody. So everybody has their own. Did this answer any buildability questions for people? Like I know some people are asking, can I build this? Is that is this kind of answering it or we're not far along yet to see how how feasible this will because the idea is several people here want to replicate who thinks they could replicate or did they get new insight that oh yeah this is actually doable. Yeah. Yeah. That's I think everybody has the that's the, yeah. Yeah. That's the goal. The, the heaviness thing. Sure, we can talk about that. Uh, um, I just wanted to say that um, for me, it was just getting away in the first place. It's like, you know, like how are we building it all? Uh, and and uh, getting some instruction about you know, what I would call like your, your standard practices. So like when you're in the military, you have standard operating procedures. It's just like, how does it work, right? Like how, how do you run your organization? How do you build things? How do you do things? And then just getting in the workshop, getting somebody, watching somebody work, having them show me how they do it, you know, how you want it done. Um, Five minutes of that, you know, and then and I'm in. And, but when I look at a model, you know, none of that is there. You know what I mean? Like the actual you know, haptics are, are missing and then the actual procedures. So, you know, having that really helped me sort of gel and then see the pieces and see the site. Like then I'm suddenly like I'm mapping the drawings that you're making to the physical things that I'm seeing and it, it makes a lot more sense to me. So, um, all of that gel. And, and I think, you know, honestly, it took. It took me maybe 15 minutes to get productive yesterday. You know, I sat with her, watched them assemble one, and I was like, oh, I know what we're doing. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, and then I was productive the rest of the day. Well, 
one, one thing about that is that Katrina told, um, showed us yesterday how to start with the lip that's supposed to, uh, that's on the, uh, the female side, the lip of the pie wood. Mm -hmm. So to always start with that side and then fasten the rest, that's like mm -hmm. one thing that, yeah. uh, I don't know, that would be a good note to just, uh, maybe it was said and I didn't hear it, but things like that make it a lot easier. Procedure wise, it's always excellent. To, so this is, would be like, I would go to some build instructions, could record some of that. Like for example, we could edit. Um, you want to, there's a very precise build order typically that you want to start with. Like for, yeah, if that's that one side. Yeah, that's, that's quite doable. You can also start at the bottom where the difference is one inch down. Mm -hmm. So you could do that, but yeah, you do want to fix two corners from which point, uh, when you fix one corner, you can adjust this. Yeah. So if you do the long one, you can adjust this to fit. But you, you need to start with one and the other to to get out the paralleling. And and the wood, the plywood, gets you through that. It's an engineered thing at 90 degrees, so you get that. So you can, you have to do one side or another. You can't like say you've got a you've built the frame already. So that we, yeah, we have a frame that can parallel. Once you put the plywood on, you, d you can't do like start, you can't really start four corners well. You want to fix one side because everything is adjustable outside of that degree of freedom still. So that's a definite procedure point. And start and with the one that's supposed to match with the next wall, right? It's more important than the bottom side or the top side. I, find um, it easier I don't think it matters really because okay, okay. both of them have to be aligned All at right, the end of the day. A, All right. Then I'm yeah. Corner. Good morning. Also, on the other right. side, if anyone wants to get a backup recording in case this. We needed two guides in place, like half it, like three quarters inch over and one inch down. And if you have both guides in place and put the screw in, then then you on the short end, then there's more room to adjust and mount. On the other side. When yeah, when you start, you're saying start with the shorter side. Yeah, start with the shorter side, and also whichever side. You need you have two guides to use because then if you can have them both in place, have that one that corner perfect, mm -hmm. and then from there you can adjust this way, and then also okay. it's just easier to do. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a, a, a go to manual? Like, uh, a who? Um, like a manual in which you can go and like see how to do things specifically. Like instead of we having to redo a whole manual about like construction, maybe we should find a manual that we could all go to if we don't know certain things. These are specific so, things that like are and... that thing we can do. The general here's a shop shop stuff. Yeah, don't really have so much of that. Um, that's something to be drawn up. As far as specific instructions for the particular build, yeah, I mean we've had exhaustive instructionals for uh, CD Go Home One. <laughs> For CD Go Home 2, we did exhaustive CAD, pretty much almost all there. For this one, nothing outside of a CAD model. We're changing things. So this is, once again, this rapid iterative thing. You go to the next version. Also, and, on the other side, if anyone wants to. And you don't have a lot to go on, failed. except your experience, where I think it was actually quite a success yesterday that without those pieces of uh, written data, but understanding and simplifying the concept, we're actually able to get farther. So that's actually success. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of uh, on his to um, the taskmaster and then all builds of everything we're doing on the board that before we even touch a board mm. down there, that board needs to be clean with a magic oh. eraser and then prepped to have everything li like listed. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, was, it was kind of easy to do from things, but we were all yeah. confused the whole time. Yeah. That board can be a key component where we just write we just have somebody that's a taskmaster. They write everything on the board. They make sure everybody's doing what they need to, and they give people ne tasks that next up as we as we finish the modules, showing them what what needs to be done. Yeah. Because the woodcuts, the woodcuts are the key component. The woodcuts were really really difficult to discern what we needed, and we wasted a significant amount of time just arguing over like, no no no, that it's this one with the tree, and you know, so that if it's on the board. Which is a direct reflection of what was in your um, CAD drawings or on your listings that you provide us. It will make it really, really easy when anybody's done cutting. They just go, they cross it off, and then or the taskmaster cross it off or whoever 
that would really, really enable us to be a well-oiled machine. Mm. If, if, if. Mm -hmm. Do we have a board down there? Yeah, yeah. we do. Yeah. Uh, idea, I would say the scrum board, the sticky pads. Yeah. What do you think of that? Yeah, they take one off when they're supposed to do it. I do worry a little bit because the board dirty and you know, work the wind and you yeah. know, sticky notes are kind Keep of it in your back pocket. Stuff, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if we can move that board to more central location. True, true. We have some sticky pads around. Can anybody find? Did anyone see them? There's, there's somewhere. Yeah. Uh, maybe in the back room here. Or... Piece of tape on the paper. Oh, sticky pads. <laughs> um, I. Yeah. I had a great experience the time I was there. Um, but where? The, what? Where? Where was that? The, well, just building. It was, it, okay. you know, what I was doing felt, I didn't feel confused, um, which is great. Because <laughs> I'm probably more novice than all of you. Um, but why, there we go. But I, I did, um, but they, they were quite heavy. And thinking about the whole two mm. women building a house thing, um, it's just a... That was a thought that I think Lindsay, you were yeah, 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 that I, I, that I resonated that. with. Uh, we need, you know, some of those pieces need like four guys to carry them. Uh, just for the side. double and door, yeah. Just like the idea of like two elderly women, you know, assembling this thing. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's realistic. Uh, I, I think it's In this it, it's still but, like okay. a huge uh, brag point to say, hey, two people could build this, uh, or even you know, three or four, you know. Uh, we suggest four, but two people could do it. It's dual. But I think if you, if you go out and you make your brag point, you know, that two elderly women could, could do this, I don't, I don't, I don't see that uh, being realistic. I'm this. sure it would not want to be one of those two people building it. That's that's too heavy for me. Like uh, it's possible. Like, it's that cold thing. Like the, the three uh, two by twelves in the heavy. Right. Oh, I'm not I'm suggesting not. we change materials. I'm suggesting we adjust maybe the, the, the guiding expectation. Yeah. yeah that's and that's just a progress marker right now. I mean, it, I mean, you know, this is only iteration three, right? So, I mean, I just. Well, we, as we were talking about it yesterday, and, and you know, really the only way that you would have to half the weight, so you'd have to half the size of the module, but then you're doubling up your studs and everything else. The and solution. Then, one solution there is that's a pretty advanced thing, the French door, double door. You can do single doors. So there's ways around. It wouldn't but be that. Even the one yeah. with like the, the apertures that we built, with the 2 by 12s like those were very, very heavy. Yeah. Uh, Maybe we need something to transport instead of changing the weight. You know, yeah. Well, but you still have to drive it. It's a huge safety risk if you cannot support the load of one of those balls on your, like, I mean, and from a safety has always got to be number one yeah. and I mean that should always be the guiding principle of um, somebody underneath the weight of those yes the two-man team that the weight, the weight of those French doors would have been damaged. What, what if you were actually fabricating this on site like we have the benefit of a warehouse that's like because we still got a dry fit and then you got to actually if you were actually building this though you you'd probably pour your pad and immediately start building it right there so then like the distance you're carrying it is when I when I've worked as a framer in the past yeah, you build it right there. I can't remember, you know, hey, you're almost everybody working on a team of two people. You'll have a, a crew of six to 12, usually. And, um, you know, everybody's got to get, get up and do that again tomorrow. And for years at a time, never be carrying stuff as heavy as we were carrying that today. Mm. Um, that's really not, not part of my experience. I mean, you know, professional trainers. It's, it's too hard to ride. Yeah. Like that. Maybe the kit could come with a tent, you know, like because to shield you from the elements while you're building it on the site. I don't know, just a do it, do it, do it, do the same square area. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, I mean, for two people, that yeah, it would be two hardcore people. Uh, so things can be modified, or or we just change the change the marketing on it too. There could be, of course, I always like to say it's always and, there could be different versions, or especially if you have equipment like, okay, here's a crane or a tractor or some big people, yeah, you can you can definitely do it. Or you can say, okay, for the doors, for the heavy ones, those modules we actually frame in place. That's other ways to do it. You could, you could come up with some sort of system to move things around or lift things up that doesn't require as much weight. You know, if you had thought about 
um, you know, having carts, hydraulic carts, or other systems in place that you could somebody could raise and move these things around without or, or, having to lift them. Straps are, uh, over your shoulders, some way to hook that up, or, or yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe like a tractor or something like that. Sure. Just, just suggestions <laughs> or, or just general. Go build you know, them. Uh, would this would be good heavy, heavy, uh, heavy, heavy situation without wearing people out. I'm just not going to reduce the weight that we're talking about. If we do, uh, if we if we go from wood to printed. <laughs> Uh, similar, oh. similar. It's going to be about the same way. Also, uh, in the future, we're going to have well, this are, probably. I mean, could we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's already here. It's already here. Yeah, they have one. Military has one. Yeah. They use it in shipyards. <coughs> yeah, they're already, they're already out. I mean, this this is uh, it's going to be more common. Exoskeletons or mechanical assist of various sorts. I mean, it's going to make people weaker. But, but it's going to make people <laughs> weaker. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> When uh, you know, what if what if we just did the two buys and then uh, hit the sheeting up um, once it was on there? That would reduce the carry load. It adds a step that maybe not everybody would want to do, but you would be able to do your um, it, you would be able to do it all at one time, kind of following it. So you would actually never have any gapping or worrying about fitting together if you put that sheeting on. With with on the two buys while when it was either dry fit or when it was actually up. Yeah, you can. Uh, there's different ways to do it. So it takes away in from this, the module. But. Right, the modularity thing is what we're trying to emphasize. So that um, actually, it's more like imagine the, the scaling up to a city block. Like say you get a thousand people, and they don't have skill, and it has to be simple enough, transparent enough that people could do it without falling over each other. That's more like the kind of thinking we're saying, like, okay, so there's a crisis, or we actually got to mobilize a whole bunch of people to to re revitalize revitalize the neighborhood, or uh, build a facility like this elsewhere. That's kind of how we think more, because we need that extreme speed and that extreme excitement. Like that's that's kind of like the whole extreme, extreme concept, sure. extreme manufacturing or extreme enterprise. Um, how do you have unprecedented numbers of people collaborate in real time? Now, for example. Uh, there's a company called Church in a Day, which builds in 24 hours. They get 200 people to build a church, like you know, a full-size church, in a day. Now that's all 100% professionals who know what they're doing. But imagine doing similar work with talent. I mean, there's a lot of human energy that's untapped, a lot of resources that's untapped everywhere, and we can use that. The main focus is to make it as simple as possible. Um, my, the building block thing. Uh, build, building block style makes it much easier. If we can 3D print parts, then you can possibly have like, okay, here's like your two by two Lego block that you put in place, one or two people or something like that. It might be different. Uh, definitely some opportunities are going to get opened up with 3D printing because we can print complex geometries that fit together like Legos. So there's different ways to go about it. But, you know, this is our third try. We're changing things around. And of course, this is like, okay, fork this. If you think there's a better way, do it. If we want to, we'll see what we learn from here. And that will be like future work within the documentation. Yeah. Are you think, thinking about 3D printing um, just the initial model? No, the full house modules at the four by four, four by eight scale. So actual full size model mo modules from waste plastic. So you you're shredding plastic and extruding it into filament and then printing printers like this, but oversized with uh, multiple print heads and stuff like that. So uh, right now the state of art, what you can do is about 20. 20 pounds per print head per day using common open source technology. So imagine you're doing like four heads or nine heads, you know, think about like 200 pounds per day um, of printed material. Now 200 pounds gets you like one or two modules. So this is realistic. This is not far cry. And you don't even need, you can use the same kind of fused deposition modeling, not like particles that, that are in like this particle extruder, just the very simple stuff that we use right now. And with our extruders, we're trying to go, go for the speed and larger, the larger nozzle sizes where we can print much faster. Um, but that's that's a possibility. Like we'll see where it goes. I think there's definite potential because I mean, 300. What is it? The numbers are 300 million tons of plastic that ends up in the environment, which is enough for like when you do the numbers, it's like 10 or 20 million houses per year. That's does it from the waste kind of plastic Yes, it does. It matters, but with printers that can accept. Uh, that kind of variability, it's the technology of the high temperature build chamber that if you have that on a printer, you can pretty much do any plastic and that's, um, there's whole science to that. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta figure out the blends that work, what 
what common blends are available where you are, what's the common feedstocks or waste waste streams. Then there's the recycling places. Those places could be re converting into here's our building materials production facilities and stuff like that. So um, yeah, using the 3D printers as opposed to extrusion machines, which are much larger, the 3D printer allows you any kind of geometry as opposed to dedicated extrusion machines, which can do like just sheet or like a tube or whatever. So the 3D printer can do a, a long way in terms of this distributed manufacturing, flexible fabrication on a small scale. That's that's the general concept here. And yeah. have you seen um, engineering based on bird bones? Where no, I haven't. <laughs> That's a good one. Engineering bur <laughs> based on burnt bones. Burnt bones. Yeah. I haven't heard about it. Maybe. Of course. Yeah. So of there, course. Of course. Yeah. There was this exhibit at the Walker Art Center in Minneapolis about columns. design. Yeah, and that they were 3D printing. This is a theory. Um, 3D printing a structure based on structurally on bird bones um, for a moon base. So they like use the moon dust. This is their theory. So using the moon dust to 3D print this structure to go around this balloon, and then they take the balloon out and they're left with the structure of this moon base. But so how do you get the astronauts going? Get, release a bunch of birds in there, <laughs> and then we'll crush the birds up and mine them. No, <laughs> <laughs> that one I didn't. Well, yeah, this guy is still being quick. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hollow structures with a minimal material needed Absolutely to be brilliant. Right. No, don't apologize for laughing. That was, well, <laughs> that was I, the blue. The, in, the insulated concrete form is, is like that too. It's it's styrofoam with a hole in the middle. Right. You I was just I mean? thinking about what could we do to make the studs safe but layer. You know? well, mm -hmm. So there's there's a new field of generative design. So they analyze and they, they it, pressurize. Yeah. And so you can remove material and with 3D printing. Yes. It's really not removing. It's just it's printing material with like honeycomb structure. It's, right, it's, right. it's not even a honeycomb, but it's like optimized honeycomb. Optimized. Is it yeah. called some like or something? What is it called again? There's a name for that. It's generative design. Generative, okay. Yeah, so the ones that are responsible for just doing the new uh, three dimensional uh, head on the one of the rows, uh, uh, rockets that we sent up in the probes. That's oh. like uh, that, that's like three different gears that control it to go like in essentially three hundred sixty degrees, but it's a yeah. uh, generative design on the gear itself. Yeah, so the 3D printing, like talk about insulating, glazing, rubber, insulating as in you print a cellular structure and that gets you the insulation. So you can print as many cells as possible to simulate what, what yeah. say, uh, uh, styrofoam does, which has got tiny little bubbles in there of air. So there's a lot of potential here. And like the discussion is going wild here, but that's the point. I mean, innovation is to be had. You know, and altogether we're stuck in an industrial system of centralized operations, which uh, decrease the level of innovation because they have to continue the way they are, because they invested all this into who they are. So to change their identity will give them an identity crisis, and that's that's not fun for the system as it is. So that's that's where the small scale innovation and just open collaboration has a huge role. And changing the world. I mean, that's that's what we envision as far as like the eventual state. It's like, you know, maybe like Jefferson, the farmer scientist or whatever, the people who are much more diversely skilled and have access to all kinds of knowledge and then the tools to reify that knowledge into their realities, to literally create the existence that they want without hurting anybody, without any compromise, you know, polluting the environment or dirty energy or toxic materials, there's all all kinds of possibilities out there going back to the first principles of still the sun gives us 10,000 times more power than we use today in our current economy. So there is no case for scarcity here. So, I mean, the world is um, can go any way we want. It's, it's kind of our choice. Someone's, someone's doing it. <laughs> you know, who has the agency? You know, that's the question we ask here. How do we give more people the agency to create the world around them? And um, personally, for, like that's been extremely liberating. Just my personal story. It's like, man, I can build anything. I can create whatever reality I want for myself, and that's that's the most liberating thing. Coming from the tanks rolling down my street in Poland in 1982 to America, and now to getting freed with open source technology. I mean, it's it's just amazing. So, um, yeah, my my story on that has been 
like that. And, and the goal is like to share this with as many people because it's the most amazing thing. And then fixing up the education system to get you more collaborative, unsiloed, integrated knowledge that gets you there, which is critical that we don't get. We're driven away from that. So yeah, a lot of good work to be done. So next next thing. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of innovate. I mean, you know, we're scratching the surface. We did this kind of system build yesterday. It worked. It was pretty good results. We've seen that the panels slide together in five minutes and we're, we can do that. Um, and we can only go from here. This is, as I always say, it's only the beginning. Um, so let's let's build. And first thing though is let's let's talk about the foundation there. So what we did the other day, we've got we've got a bunch of unlevelness on the on the foundation right now, and it's like one and a half inches off from one end to the next. So what I would actually suggest, and it's a proposition that we um, move south because we can, to 16 feet south on a pad which. <laughs> right there is actually very level, uh, which was the second pad we poured and we did a much better job and the truck didn't ram into our foundations. <laughs> so we're pretty level there. So what I would suggest is just removing the forms and redoing uh, the square now. Um, so, and that lets us have a chance to revisit the squaring procedure because there is a very precise, uh, like we talked about the order of build, it matters. That gets very important in things like how do you square up a foundation? So uh, let's do this. Uh, on the pad there, we have one straight. So we'll, we'll go basically 16 feet south. So right uh, a little more than 16, but to where it's level. So we have one edge on the left-hand side. If you're looking at it from the front, if you're looking from the south to the north. Left-hand side is one straight edge. We can start there. We've got one 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 piece of wood at 60, we already pre-cut everything. So then the question is, okay, where does that corner, what do we do next? So we've got a long side. Let's take a long side, say it's the north side, and we move it out. It's already 16 feet. We already have that dimension, so we can check that. So how do you get the perfect corner? Because the point is, so we start with this, say the, sh the short side, and then we do the long side. How do you do this? Well, 16 gets us anywhere here. So how do we identify where exactly it has to be? So you can do that relatively simply. So you measure the cross. And what I would suggest, so we what we do is draw like a, you know, you can draw a line there. And then you can draw from here. You have a very explicit distance. And you can draw that distance there. Those two points will those two lines will intersect only at one possible point. And that is your absolute perfect square. We should not have any problem to, to align it squared within like a quarter inch. That should be relatively easy. The only trick is, okay, are people holding the tape right? Or, or I mean, any kind of um, inconsistency there. Or, or like the thing we're measuring against is moving around. Well, let's fix that. Let's fix that first short side. Uh, then we keep the long side flexible. I mean, we, uh, that's not fixed. It's two pieces. So maybe what we want to do is bond them together with a temporary piece of wood. So we move that whole long arm to be wherever it needs to be. So we basically okay. imagine that wiper, We're that curve. Sixteens on the other side of our 32? I mean, you've got a, a 16 we'll and a... Way. Move the whole thing. Yeah, don't, don't do the... Don't flip one side because the south side is actually the one that's got the nice dip in there. That's like one and one and a half inches. So, was self leveler ever considered? Uh, yeah, th that would be just another step. It's like pouring another foundation almost because it's a lot of work to mix it and stuff like it's that. A lot of work to put those beams down too. Yeah. But my um, suggestion. The beams? You talking about the foundation right, stuff? Yeah. The, 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 doing measurements. Um, I think that's. We're yeah, I think we're into this problems on on the first day we were working. Um, I suggest you have a, a dedicated team of three people. One person is always holding the tape, so they're always gonna hold the tape. The okay, place, that's actually good. Far measurements. Those people can sort of go to town on it, and mm -hmm. there's some there's some reliability that's hard when we were switching off roles somewhere. Right, right, yeah, yeah that was okay. part of the issue. So maybe like three people and no more do that part. Um, where we're kind of bottlenecked at that step. So what can we do in the meantime for the rest of the people? Um, what do we do? Well, we, we need to sort. We need and label those sort and label yeah. everything. Yep. We want to 
So, um, are we modeling or are we driving and, and putting in so that I know what your oh, yeah, so was. yeah, okay, so let's let's get these notes here. We can take them down too, down, down to the workshop. But where are the things? So, three people, uh, three people for the removing the foundation initially to take out, yeah, just pry bar, just pry up, pry up the nails. Uh, I'm not sure if they'll come up. Oh, yeah. Really Actually, yeah, they will. So actually, let's push them up so we can just round them in again. OK. Yeah. That should work. If not, we got more nails. So uh, let's try that. So I mean, cool. it, I, sorry, uh, uh, that will not work. Uh, you need to push those nails out so you got a flat board again. Yeah. You got to push them out. Push them out. So, so say you pry it up. After you pry it up, put it on the concrete and bang the wood and the nail would come up. Which, that's what should probably happen. So review on that. So overview of tasks. So there's sorting. There's like label with spray paint, label and sort everything. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask about actually is, uh, and more this is workflow, how we uh, do between this house and we, we have the other house that I guess uh, you haven't seen much of outside of the video. Um, next step is the the joists for the second floor. And uh, we have a, so actually I want to ask this question because uh, the joists to go, go up extremely fast, they need to be cut to size, which is 15 feet, nine inches, because it's in between end joists, which are three, inch, three inches total, 1.5 1, 1 on each side. So if you're doing a 16, you got 15, nine there. Uh, those all got to get cut. That could be, that could be a few people. Uh, we've got, um, I think two or three sliding miter saws, two, two at least, three maybe. You can also use a, a circular, hand circular saw to do those cuts. I mean, we could actually get uh, as many people as we like cutting joists too. Um, so there's, do we have colored spray paint? That we we have white and black. That we can yes, like color, color cuts. We like purple as the 15. Point. Don't have those colors no, um, because we have all colors. For labeling, is top right white. of the outside of the, uh, was that the, where was the designated area for label? I was thinking you said you leave left to right and we put them up left to right. It would always be in the right hand corner and then that would be the same well, way around. Because the thing is laying down, you probably might want to write it on the four, flat, four edges maybe so you can see it from any direction or you can put a little mark. I would rather like not really mark up the sheets since that's visible, but on the sides. Visible the by what? Oh, like say do a big number one or whatever, like uh, thinking about Outside. the videotape. Thinking about what, you know, that's, just kind of keep it looking. I neat. would make it huge on there so your students can say, hey, oh, okay, that's one R1 on the top right. It'll read from left to right and you're going to wrap it. Yeah, yeah, sure. We can do that. We can do that. So, so one part. Um, what What were you guys saying? Just uh, give up a nice label. Anyone? So label. But there's there's um, I'm, I'm, um, the new cell. A little bit tentative. The first couple labels until we're sure we got everything in the right places. Yeah. Because I. I Imagine myself saying, oh, this is definitely one on one, but it's these two foot tall letters. And then coming back and you're like, oh, wait, that was actually three. Yeah. And scratching that out and then going back and things. Yeah. And so I, I'd say, uh, if you get all those things on paper, you yeah. need to go, go big letters. Or, right every, yeah, draw on a smaller thing and then just validating. Yeah. So giant letters in pencil? Yes. Brush. All right. Any kind of three there's a top plate. Uh -huh. top plate. We don't need any pre drills, do we? Like uh, blocking? Nah. Don't need it really this time around uh, in terms of which which specific part? Like uh, you put the blocking where the joist should be. Right. And like so you uh, pre drill it, you have it all settled. And then. So. So let's talk about what the state of this. So the idea was, first of all, for perspective, if anybody hasn't heard that, but this structure now is going to be one where we're intending to run quarterly workshops where we take it apart and use it again 
for the structure build. Uh, so people learn all about framing and then closing up to that point, up to the roof and EPDM and making it look like a proper thing, including the carport uh, that's also doable right there. Now we have the second house, the the Sika Home 2, which has got the shell right now, but it's, the interior is not finished. So the suggestion there was let's work on all the interior stuff on that structure because we're going to take this one down. So it's going to be very easy to take this one down. And we can do everything like the electrical, the plumbing, the interior walls, the, the floor, the ceiling, uh, some insulation, uh, finishing up all the trim and doors and windows. Actually, the doors and windows we want to put in here too um, to make a complete structure. Um, that's really only for pictures because we actually don't have the doors and when the windows are there, we should put in the windows here, maybe the doors leave it for that. Because actually in the, the, the version two, we didn't put in the doors yet. So maybe we save it for that. The windows, yeah, we want to practice that since we didn't, uh, they're already in, in the other house. But we're basically able to divide between this largely structural and the final finish work on the other house, since that's a, that's a good way to go about it in this particular scenario. So if we do that, um, then what do we do here? So we've got walls, the top plate, then the second story floor, you need that. But basically we're asking, well, what do we need here in order to make a complete building? So on the second floor, uh, we have joists, the plywood, definitely yes, walls, roof structure. Um, we don't need to do insulation there. I mean, we have insulation in the other house. We can maybe do like a sample. Here's what laying the insulation up looks like, both in the ceiling and in the walls. Um, it's not too pleasant because it kind of gets all over the place, but we can get a feeling for what that is. Now, if we talk about what's the minimum critical requirement, so after top plate, that blocking is questionable because if we, I would suggest we do the blocking, which has insulation behind it in the other house, which isn't done. So here, all we need, would need is the floor platform. And then we could even question, okay, since we've got a, a carport and second story door, do we still want to do the stairway cutout? Uh, because that's, I mean, it's more work. I mean, uh, of course we can do it, but I would actually, I was thinking about the thing. What if we just lay the joists up on the second, uh, the second story platform? Don't even worry about the cutout for the, the stairway because we're doing a stairway in the other, other place. So, okay. I mean, well, now, now, what's been the advantage, so that what's the advantages and disadvantages and the advantages are that to get the joist up there, I mean, that's going to be really quick. Whereas if you do the cutout, you have to cut out uh, a bunch more and shorten the other ones. And you, there's some thinking, a little bit of thinking and uh, stuff there. So because it's so hot in the afternoon, this is a, I mean, feel free to table, toss this out, whatever. But I was wondering about what if we did like an hour of kind of planning like this in the morning and mm -hmm. then worked until lunch and mm -hmm. then did more like discussion collaboration right mm -hmm. after lunch. And then maybe good. there'd be a space for a little more finishing up of work. Um, I mean, it does stop and start the work process a little bit, but it also gives us cool of the day time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, so it's, it was just an idea. So are you talking about 12 to 2, the, 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 the critical hot hours? Yes. Yeah, just, just uh, it was just a, a thought about reorganizing Safety. the structure Always of the number day, one. but it's, it's just an idea. Let's become so nocturnal. Sorry, like, too many bugs here. What do people think? Should we, uh, I mean, it's a good so, the, idea. so yeah. like, try to keep this short, yeah. get out there, and then do a little more in the afternoon. I, I, I like the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, stop it at, you know, noon time for a couple hours and have some time to say, hey, what was not working? How can we, yeah. how can we fix today's problems right now? Yeah. We, uh, okay. We, we could also do rolling lunches where we're just working and you know, once noon time hits, you like, you want to take lunch then or you want to take lunch whatever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be like a clean stop to work. Okay, so so basically for now the practical implications are let's uh, let's get out there as quick as we can. So allocate some roles. Uh, so what do we do here? Um, 
I got that. I'll, I'll pull up the sales. I'll knock them down the nails and cut them for the new. How many labelers do you need? I mean, probably like one. Do you have stencils? That would probably be the most appropriate. Don't have stencils. Okay. Sense. We probably yeah, we probably make them come real quick just so that everything looks yeah. uniform. I'm on the same. You can go And yeah, yeah. Or little left. Uh, Zach, yeah. Okay. Who uh, wants to do the labeling part? What is the uh, spray paint? So, what's so you have to take a look at the diagram, the master diagram with all the part labels, basically one through twenty-four particular letters and stuff, and put them on them, make them clearly visible on the panels. I'd like to work on that, but I'm not confident yeah, about my ability know. to figure it out correctly, so if, uh, if I didn't have help, I would have help. Really, there should be okay. a labeler, yeah. some of at least two people to move the panels around, and maybe there's going to be more people moving the panels. So what do we have to do is set the top plate? On a top plate, that requires staggering the edges so you you take a piece of two by six that's, uh, we've got 16s, a lot of 16s. Well, you got to straddle so you you're not ending up on a, on a joint. That means if you got 16, then you've got, uh, what, eight? Um, six, how does this math work? You got eight and eight left, but you can't, you can't do it. You have to split that eight into maybe like a six. And right, because right, you got like, the edges. Yeah, so we got to do that. So maybe... Find a piece of two foot somewhere. Um, so, so basically on a top plate, you've got your joints every so often. Uh, say you take your 16 footer, you know, you gotta you know span it so it's well, that would be like a 12 footer, but put it up there. You can never end up on the dress. So you just gotta figure out the correct dimensions. Try to use pieces that are like for example. Okay, to make it explicit, we do a 16. What adds up to uh, that we already have, perhaps? Like, uh, we could do a 10, a 2, and 6. The joints every uh, 2 joints. and 4. I think, I think. Yeah, I think 10. 12. We could do it. I think we've got 10s. I think we've got 10s around. So I think 10, 2, and 4, and the other one is 16. So that. That all should end up as 30, 32, 16 plus 16. So yeah, uh, that's all it is. I mean, we don't have to do anything to the top plate just when we screw it down, but that's after we put the walls up. So all you could do right now is prepare those pieces of material, just get them in a pile so that we have them ready. We're not scrounging around later. Uh, it's not Sorry. too much, is this what but that's all around the house. So you have to figure that out for the sidewall and for the other one. So there's a few pieces of material there. Yeah. Is this what fastens the wall modules to each other from the top? Yeah. What aligns it from the top? Yep. Um, wants to do that? Any taker? Uh, I'll go on this one. Yeah, that's going to be a little team. Okay. Sure. Christian. Yeah, we're like oh. the thing that they're cutting off. Um, there's a top plate to the wall module as well. Yes, it's something that's supposed to go to like halfway or for the next one or longer. It ends in three, and if you pass, I think that's what you do. If you pass the two models off each other by a few minutes, it seems like way too long. Yes, I just want to make first. Okay. All right. Um, labeling. So that was. Uh, Paul's going to help out with doing initial stencils, and then if somebody else wants to do the spray paint once finished, um, that that person probably needs to identify and label everything in preparation, double check QC, oh, and then yeah, yeah. the um, and then the spray paint. Oh, will come. oh sorry. No. Yeah, Joyce, that's a big. That's uh, we could get a bunch of people on that. Um, you want to cut them at the right length, you should measure twice or get it verified that you're at the right place. Um, wants to be on that team there. How many joists are in the building? There's six. So if we do the, the question there was, do we decide with uh, just going with a simple floor that's accessible then through the second story door on the patio? Or do we put in that aperture 
which we're not going to use, but it gives you the experience building that part and the complexity with that. And do people want to do that or want to do that? Yeah. What is the aperture for? So. There is no external stairs. This the so this is basically a staircase. It's there. So that means the joists end up there. Uh, so all these other joists are all the way across. But by the stairway, you have a hole there. Yeah. We will be able to make stairs in Nico too, though. Uh, we're making stairs. This aperture is already there. Okay. So. You wouldn't get a chance to make the aperture. Means that you got to measure out these other ones, and then there's one here, one there. So uh, there's a diagram from the last time, which is identical to what we did the last time. And if you want to actually take a look at that, this yeah. would be under SH2 build instructions. And well, the, the key is that, like when you're taking it apart, is it going to complicate your process to reutilize material? Well, it's just a few more cuts, a few more. <clears throat> it's it's just. Well, to take it apart, it's actually almost as easy as just like two more pieces. But uh, okay. so it's not a big deal in terms of this assembly. Assembly is bigger because you gotta okay measure it exactly and it's gotta be at a certain place. It's oh yeah, so for example, right here. Yeah, I mean, the, there's quite a bit there. So what we did last time, this is from V2, but yeah, this is all pretty much detailed here. Uh, we gotta look at this document. What we did was this blocking where uh, just kind of blocking there, so okay, that's that that's like the edge of the house. Okay. I think Christian was yeah. was mentioning this blocking, which we put up there to denote the location of the joists. Now we have the plywood every four feet, so we know exactly where this is already, and just measure two feet off of every crack. So I, I don't think we need to do the blocking. Also, the other part of the blocking was we're going to enclose it. Um, Here's the other part of the blocking. That's what there's a closure with insulation behind it. So this is all full 3D CAD and in, in, uh, pre CAD here. Um, but that's that's what we were doing before. Those are locating blocks. We don't have to do them right now because they're already on the other house. And we're gonna do. We didn't do this blocking there. On the other house, we've got those two blocks already there. The simplification for now is that we don't need them for location, but for the actual insertion, just closure of that to make make that area there, insulated area, even with interior walls, you, you do need that blocking in there. But we will do that. Um, these little closures with a, another little block on the back, they're screwed into the blocks, and at the bottom they have a place to go. But that's kind of what that's about. Um, but the thing uh, on the detail, yeah, I mean, this, so there's what's to be said for the specific dimensions. That's a detail of the closure there. Um, we did that blocking there. Uh, so here for the end joists, like on the end, you have two of them because you're you're spanning the wall, which is 5.5 inches. There's a few details. So so whoever's doing this, we need, I guess, a good cut list. So there's a cut list of plywood on the bottom left here. So that's the plywood that would go on. And that order is actually, Menards is uh, shipping that today. So we're going to get at that today. Um, but that's... Basically, full sheets of plywood on the floor, and then there's a there's four that are a little different. Uh, as far as the specific cut list, where's our cut list? Ken, were you doing that with the joists before? That is the cut list. Fifty nines, seventeen of them. Four that are 141, four that are 16 exact, and two that are nine foot ten and a half. So we did. And here, what I what I said, those lines there are. We actually marked it down the very middle, so that when we lay the plywood, we would lay the second row of plywood, which was uh, 
second row means means this row here, since that's going right down the middle. And that's uh, if that if that line is exactly down the middle, you know that this is straight and you can work around it as opposed to say working in a corner or that one uh, which serves as a ruler for this side but there's nothing on the other side here that starting with this one allows you to use that as a ruler for this row and that row as well yeah. that's that's why we wanted to start on the second row there i'm i'm trying to yeah. find that you're uh, to follow along with you on this um but i'm trying i'm having a little bit of trouble finding it in the uh the google drive it's in the, in the so if you go to no, type in sh2 in a, on a wiki and then build a structure. Yeah. Oh, there okay. so, there's a document on the CDOs with the home D3 build instructions for um, Joyce. Ah. I don't know if they read. Oh, yeah. So let's look at so SH3 that apparently uh, under build instructions. Yeah, let's see. Instructions. Oh, there we go. Well, okay. So actually, you can. So the file is there. So look, let's look at how accurate the file is. So we can navigate in 3D. Um, oh, okay. There it is. It's. Um, So let's open that up, and that, that shows the, the story. It's the same. It's actually been updated from from version two for maybe some minor details. Um, what happened to me? So let's open that up. You can also open that up. Uh, feel free to download that. If you can go, uh, how do you find this where I am? SH, just type in SH3 in the wiki. You'll get the development template. SH3 has the title uh, and address bar. But where's the, um, the quick chat file? It's under the build instructions, so oh, yeah. SH3. It's in the Google Doc on the walls. Um, ah, yeah. Inside the presentation, okay. Uh, file set. Yeah, so I'm saying like uh, for now, that's that's called coordination. Yeah, we we uh, have to look at the details. Uh, if we didn't do the aperture, it's straightforward with all the 15 nines. That's it. But to open up, roof joists. Oh. Oh, I see. That's actually what the roof. This doesn't have the cutout, but that's that's what it does look like. Uh, so if you look at look at some details, like you know what's going on, on the edge. I mean, conceptually, this is simple. It's on the edge. You've got one piece here, second piece there. There are sixteens exactly. That's. This one's a 16, that's a 16. And all of these, the middle ones, how long are those? Fifteen nine. Yeah. All the ones outside of the edge, call it rim. This is the rim, the long side being the rim. The end, 
there's a double end here. So the two at the end are separated such they span the top plate, which means that to their outside, it's 5.5 inches on both sides. So that's what we got. Do, um, do What do those boards come at, um, the 16-foot boards? What do they actually come at? 16 and 1 and around there. Okay. Always a little. So it's always a little over. A little over. Mm -hmm. It's just a little trim on the end. But it's important because it wouldn't fit otherwise. And then the 59s, you have to cut off the three inches. Okay, so we're not doing the two plus four plus ten. We're doing two sixteenths. This is different than top plate. Top plate goes under. Well, let's bust out the actual model. Let's go through what the overall structure yeah, of the house looks right, like. Right. Uh, since there's questions, definitely. So for SH2, we, we do have a pretty much a complete CAD file. So if you look at, I mean, there's there's like more than you. Do we have like construction? Want to know here? Like a PDF? We can just download and flip through. That's uh, a great I'm idea. Creating a cut list that I'll, I can send anybody's uh, text message if they'd like. Um, and then, you know, they're just three shots, but they'll they'll give us the capability to just look on our phones and then put it on the board. That's good. There are cheat sheets and uh, Google slides, which you're going to call it, say it like a cut list and step by step, like one, two, three number instructions. It's still hard to visualize, but there's a written description. Like first do this, the jack says, and the cutter. Yeah, but that was for the last one. It's no you're longer right. valid. It needs to be updated. Right? Yeah. It needs to be updated. So that's the interior of the house. That's your, that's your, uh, but let's step out of it. That's our second story. But what's what's underneath it? So this is your <clears throat> second story platform. Underneath it is, and it's not in here. That's just one one piece. But you see the the door, the stairway aperture. And uh, if you were, so 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 maybe like I'll I'll, I'll even introduce this idea here because. Oh, sorry. What we do know is that the pattern is very regular, but there's a big complication with that with that door there, the, the entryway. And uh, another suggestion that's possible is we, we say uh, two ways to do it. We can pre-cut everything, or we can go up there, do the full ones, put a board right across that, and cut them off. That's another way to do it. Um, anyone take take her for that, or we start properly. Uh, to cut it off in there, you need a reciprocating saw, whereas you use a sliding miter saw when you do it in preparation. The advantage of of the cutting it in place is that it's easy; you don't have to measure anything because you know where you are. Um, the disadvantage is it's a little well harder physically. Conceptually, it's very simple because you know you've got a four-foot aperture there, but well, physically, it's a little easier, harder. Uh, um, a saw like that is really hard to get really accurate cuts. Yeah. It's a pretty ragged-looking um, old you made. plates and stuff. But, well, there's plates on the end. Of the, there's a plate that goes on the end of that, so that gets all covered up. It's, I don't think that's too much an issue on that. Um, oh, oh. Of course. Three yeah, I mean, uh, I'm just suggesting that for the advantage of right now, we can Are go those outside right now as opposed to spend long about half an hour to go over it. Yeah. Those are so those are on the board as long as long boards on the cut list that will be recut whenever putting in the aperture, or are mm -hmm. they in there as the? Side no, right now. So in a document that we have. We're, we're looking at this doc. Uh, we have the cut list. Cut list is right here. Yeah, yeah. all I'm you saying is, is, is the cut list with um, with you doing those cuts on, on the platform, or is that cut list them all the way across, and then you make the cuts yourself once you want the uh, stair aperture? No, it's, it's where you pre-cut everything before you even put it up there. So the okay. hole is already there. Dope. Dope. Yeah. So that's 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 what we need to do. So we need to uh, print out that or take a snapshot of that. Um, yeah. 
Uh, well, that's, yep. Are the, the boards are laid out with with offsetting on each side. Are it supposed to be like that to mark out the midpoint or no? Right? Um, I'm, th I'm thinking of. Uh, yeah, that's. Yeah, that's, it's because on the sides it. of the wall. So here's the idea here. Why we when we were cutting them. Um, why? When we. So this is after we cut them. We stacked them staggered for the reason that because we made we actually made this line once these things were stacked in a pile, we just drew the half the, the midpoint line so we can draw it very easily across all of them. However, um, there's not really a super easy way to draw a straight board across all of them because you have to have like all the edges perfectly aligned. Yeah. But it's not easy. So we staggered them. For the second reason that you don't mistake, like for example, if you measure one, sometimes you can catch the tape on the wrong one. And you're actually measuring the wrong from the wrong start point. So we did this stagger so that the line would actually end up staggered, so you know that you're actually measuring it properly. Does that make sense? You, you it was just the me mechanics of how we marked it at the halfway point. Otherwise, you can take each. I mean, these are big and heavy, so you can take like each one and uh, take it, put it on a table, measure it. Mark point. A lot of labor. They're in a pile. You don't want to like carry this ton twice, right? Yeah, it's 50 like, times. Um, it's still in the middle. They're just staggered. Each yeah, it's staggered just for the, um, the the concept that you don't mistakenly put okay. the tape on the next one over and you're actually getting a bad mark. And it's just mechanics of marking. But, and then you, um, you keep the, the middle point between those two lines to, to know the middle. Nine, it's ninety-four point five. Yeah, but well, yeah, I get it. Yeah, as long as they're staggered the exact amount yeah. on both sides. Yeah. And what's ninety-four point five? Where does that come from? Does that half? Half. It's like half, half of what? Well, minus minus three inches, right? On two per, per. It's half of one eighty-nine, which is the number we know from one ninety-two is sixteen feet. One eighty-nine is three inches under sixteen feet. And that's half of that. That's the midpoint. And now for those other ones, it was because the other ones are partial, they're cut. Marking there is different. Uh, but we did do that. I think that worked. I mean, it was a little bit extra work here, but I when we laid out the plywood, it was okay, bam, right there. No messing around, like, oh, where is it gonna be? But I think that's that's useful still. So, so I would suggest that somebody's yeah. trimming every single one of these. These are all oversized mm -hmm. for the 16 inches. So everybody's trimming them. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so trimmers, you can mark it right the there. The trimmers are markers. In yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. Trim and you there mark. We go. And you trim and mark. mark both sides. So joist both cut time. and mark. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and the only other instruction on so joist cutting is that if it's bowed, like it's got a slight curve, make that curve go up so that over time it gets kind of punched down because the joists are standing on edge, but they might be curved a little bit yeah. one way. So make that the crest go up. So that's the side you would mark. Otherwise, these are all identical. Yeah, that's important. That, that's so important for joist the markers, cut know? plus mark at the same time. Yeah, OK, so avoid, yeah, forget about that in a pile because we're already going to put in a pile already marked. Joist cut plus mark. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's a bunch of stuff there. Um, how many people want to do that? Who wants to do that? Cut mark. Next point mark. Okay. Four. Is there another? I'm in. Three, four. Evan. Compass. Eric? Yep. yep. Uh, so we got three, six, seven, eight, nine people. And we've got five that can take off for early lunch. No, what, what else is there? What else we got? I mean, Anthony and some more people here. Yes. Yeah, if you guys want to help me jack that still play it up real quick, it would be. Uh, there's going to need to be uh, some, uh, some real considerable strength that we're our week, we're going to put in a new cell today as well, right? You want to put up, knocked up, and then remeasured, and then 
redone? It would be helpful if we were doing this metric three. while I was pulling up, too. Well, yes, three people. So right, Anthony, right. Michael, okay. and Anthony, you here. You are right there. Who else wants to do that? Ken? Oh, hey, Hey. So we have. Uh, you're back. Hey. How's your son? Uh, yeah, there, yeah, I needed. Yeah. So I thought there was a Maybe. measurement team because that's going to be a team of like Kansas three City. people, right? Yeah, yeah credit credit card. measurement <laughs> team plus you or? Um, yeah, yeah. Because uh, well, I'm pulling up having. As soon as you have the first one and we set the first one, we can pretty much start measuring off of that one. Well, you kind of need the two. We said about the two. Those two, as soon as those two, the two are available, the all the measurements can be made pretty much. And then we'll, we'll wait for the third version. But yeah, it takes kind of a little bit of fussing around until you get really used to this process. Um, so Ken, Anthony, Michael. We've got like four people floating. I can take on the micromanagement role. Well, do we want to have them in the, the, the dry fit movement of things? Right, because we all have a lot of things it. all over the, the site right now. What are the other things to that are uh, outstanding? What else? Um, that refers to the model site. Yeah. Joyce cutting, I mean, we could add another person there. Is anyone comfortable with, like, how many? Do we have three or two sliding miters? We have two single okay. sliding miters with another one that's no guard. Who right. hadn't used the miter? So yeah, two people perfect. safely. The other one person has to use uh, just uh, yeah, or double up as teams of two. Yeah. But I would say uh, one more person there, maybe. With uh, those a novice, a novice, because he's pretty, he's considerably knowledgeable in that. That area, so they would really get a good learning experience if you're uncomfortable with the mic yourself. Those 12 inch uh, by 16 well, might be like beneficial to have like two. Yeah, we'll come back. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of. So we got four, uh, four people. All right. <laughs> Thirteen. Ten. Uh, two more people. Who's uh, unemployed currently? <laughs> hey, yo. Uh, hey, uh, 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 yeah. Manny and Maddie and Christian. I think that's about everybody. Who, who didn't get claimed yet? Yeah. Oh, Lance. Lance. Wow. Um, DJ? Instruction DJ. DJ? The music plays. Yeah, do you oh, want to be DJ? DJ. <laughs> oh. uh, I don't, I don't. I'll do whatever you guys need. Me. Uh, Marcin, is it okay if we try out that, that role, the facilitator role? And see yeah. if it works? Uh, uh, we well, do a facilitator. That's role for me today, but um, I'll do it. Uh, <laughs> No, no, it's 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 just we're gonna we're gonna pop up all cuts, pop up all things that need to be done, um, put the listings on there, and then pull them off as we as we scrub them out. Okay. You you're talking about the whiteboard management? Or yeah. Okay. It's it's gonna be some nuance for cleaning it, prepping it for like the new, um, moving but, it, uh, putting up all of the kind of things. Are we gonna we're have like the same scene, uh, construction manager? Yeah, we're sure, sure. sure. But, yeah, uh, maybe we get somebody. Maybe like, I don't know, I'll work with Marshall, but maybe somebody like that's on, let's say hold the bubble of, of yeah. what's going on. Yeah. It, 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 it should have been easier to do yesterday when everyone's doing the same thing with different wall modules. I, 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 I of it. Probably so do in that. this case, uh, some way, but. Oh. Right. No, I, I think that there's one. Well, is it okay? It's, 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 you nice. know what's going on today, right? With the 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 real the the exact components you need to actually facilitate, right? So you can provide the a liaison to the book, like uh, telling like how we iterate it out, what we're what we're looking for on the board. Yes, well, but I think March is the yeah. Well, so I'll try to get the board. Where's the whiteboard there? It's it's, it's, it's the right at the end. It yeah. definitely needs a deep cleaning. Uh, okay. Do you have a uh, uh, magic eraser? No. Okay. Yeah, like oh, ISO profile or something yeah, that should work. Yeah. Oh, we can use the yeah. these things on it. Just put, just use these for now. Uh -huh. Okay. So I'll, I'll take that out. I'll try to manage the tasks. Task you. So Evan, Hampus, Eric, and Ted, you guys clear on what Joyce cutting means, and. Yes. Yeah. And what about the cut list that I, that was on that page? Can you get that? I'm sending it to the whole 
group it that together. If it, uh, I don't like span of We need that know, that cut list as the one page in a doc. This one, this I'll, page. I'll share your email me. <laughs> okay, so I think we have a cut list. Okay. The labeling part, you have to look at the diagram from yesterday. And uh, that should be, you guys feel like you got enough to go on? Because there are, those guys are all stacked up, there's probably going to be a fair amount of more people needed to move um, modules off of other modules to see what's underneath. So that's not going to be a lot of working diagrams, but also a lot of pivots and those things around that you grab on square. Mm -hmm. Okay, but otherwise, you. You know where the diagram is. I'm not in the labeling group. I'm in the Joyce Cup group. But the diagram from yesterday, yeah, we, I think we're all. You right. guys got Logan. You got the diagram, right? You know the diagram. You're you're in the yeah, label yeah, group, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you got the diagram. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay, Ken, Aaron, Penny, and Michael. You guys are pretty clear on what to do on a cell. Yes, sir. Top play, Christian, Penny, and Matt. You guys are pretty clear on that, Christian? You could kind of. Oh, yeah, work. Crystal. But uh, like, for example. We have the top plate. It's consisted of the one. Yeah. Is that the top plate file or the uh -huh. silver plate file? No, the top plate. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing the two, the two. Yeah. I think it's much uh, three. But that means you have to cut the very specific last yeah. Okay. Okay. If that's the case, I think we can roll out there. Any other questions or anything? Or? What's up? Let's do it. Go key. Where is he? I like right. it. I like it. Yeah, I get it. Let's do it. Uh, military people. <laughs> I should have called that. You know, it's not less expensive there, but. All right, so who's in the whiteboard? I got uh, two brand new markers. I think there are uh, some alcohol. Yeah. Or we just use the sticky notes if we don't find that. Yeah, those sticky notes, that, that, that thing's so dirty down there that the sticky notes yeah, don't stick. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, I can't touch your I think it's a yeah. super blue hair. I think we're I think we're good. Right. Now that's the type and of sticky notes. Like, that's our emergency medical care there, okay? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Respect. Jeez. What's the goal for today? We got the new silk plate. After that, I mean the ideal would be 30 minutes. Get all those walls up. If they're all labeled and the sill is there. That's the picture we got you. That's the goal. Let's document. Uh, I'm putting the camera out there. So yeah, stuff like that. But otherwise, we're, we're still on schedule, so we're, we're good. Okay, that's more of a heavy lifting job, which I'm fine with. I thought that each stage would have Okay, sure. Hey, hey. Well, that's true. Uh, modules are the so, 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 so what I what I did was I made it to the top and go So I just did that. I brought up all the and I just slider. So I've got to go to let me see if I can export a PDF and then I can just like. Um, I can just, I can just, I can just,